are good people. I have not drawn traditionally in a very, very long time. So I don't have any gimmicks with what I'm doing today. I want to draw something. So I've got my bucket of random ideas and prompts and things. I'm going to pick a couple of these and then I'm going to draw and chill and relax and create a traditional artwork because I haven't in ages. So let's see what we get. A maned wolf. A harpy eagle. Boy. I'm gonna call Mulligan on this because I've done a toy recently with my Triceratops. So, Mulligan. Pangolin. So, Pangolin, Harpy Eagle, Main Wolf, Kitten. Yes, you are a kitten. I know. I know mommy's the worst. She's not immediately petting you. She also put something on your couch. Go to your couch. Go to your couch. Yes, yell at me all you want. Go to your couch. Alright. Let's do some doodles. So my lovely little sweet kitten, Violet, did not let me start drawing immediately. She needed all of my attention. So enjoy these adorable little kitty pats and my very messy desk. She's cute though. I like her. Boop. Boop. Yes. Now, she also got my camera all out of focus. So. While I started this drawing after thoroughly removing all of the cat hair, you will see that all the pre-sketching was entirely out of focus and I didn't notice. So uh, yeah, you can't see anything I'm doing until I zoom in. I feel like I am trying to grow and do different angles. So uh, tell me what you think about this. Anyway. So we have a pangolin, a maned wolf, and a harpy eagle. Now with the face shape, I was originally trying to give them a beak and then it ended up turning into a little bit of a snout slash beak, but I wanted to have kind of that really neat downturned face that the penguins have. I really liked the harpy eagle's feather crown and the, the pangolin crazy legs. I actually mixed kind of the pangolin uh, fist walk and claws with canine-esque legs and kind of got this really werewolfy monster, but something about the uh, downturned face made him really soft in features, which I really liked. Uh, there were a bunch of pictures of harpy eagles with their chicks and their, you know, like these scary looking gray feathery monsters with these giant puffball chicks that are always just kind of staring awkwardly. So I decided to give this critter some babies. So it wound up being a mother sitting with her pups or cubs, however you want to do it and uh, eating with them. It was interesting to try to get the body shape to stay with the little ones. Um, and also make them, you know, proportionately baby and cute because the parent is so muscly. On to my favorite part, the inking. 
Here's my ink bottle. It's not really meant for India ink, but I use it. Lovely little pool pen. And, uh, I don't know. More of my messy desk in the background. There is something just so relaxing and soothing about doing inking, especially with a quill pen. I have recently tried to go back and straight up do inking with like a micron, and I have lost all ability and interest in that. It's all about the quill pen these days. Can't go back. There's just something nice about the line and the texture and how it moves across the page that I am hugely addicted to. It's faster somehow. Yes, of course, this is sped up. But I find that I'm able to work just more clearly and more smoothly with a quill pen than I could with other types of pen. There's just a natural looseness to it. I want to practice more with a brush and ink, too. I've done that, especially Inktober. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. There's just something nice and soothing about this. In the end, I'm not super satisfied with the poses of these guys. If I had done some thumbnailing before, I feel like I probably could have done something a little more interesting. But it's still kind of neat. And then that baby on the left is kind of my favorite. It's so cute. I have not done watercolor in ages, and it was really nice to sit down and do one. As you guys can see, I work with a really, really dirty watercolor palette, and I've actually always done this, and it's actually something I do on purpose. I have a lot of trouble picking up colors for very light washes, and I found you can actually get a really nice light wash if you just pick up little bits of dried old watercolor off of the palette instead of getting it straight out of the pan. When you get it out of the pan it's a lot thicker and more saturated whereas a lot of times when it's dried on the palette you can go for some of the thinner areas and yeah so that's why my paint palette looks so gross. I do it on purpose. Yes that is a thing that I do. For the coloring, I wanted to definitely lean after the main wolf with the, the reds and browns and the foxy colors. Uh, I did so many layers, the paper actually started getting angry at me with the amount of layers I did. This is not exactly watercolor paper, it's mixed media paper. So it wasn't exactly happy to get that much liquid. But it held up, and it did pretty well. I'm gonna finish working on the sketchbook. I've had the sketchbook for a while and just kind of ignored it. I like to imagine this guy fits an ecological niche with uh, going after just mites and 
you know, termites and ants and stuff, and it looks like this big, terrifying, hulking beast, and you probably should avoid, you know, angering one. Probably shouldn't go anywhere near its children. That would probably be a good idea. But I imagine it being a pretty chill animal when left alone. In my head, I've been playing with multiple different things to call it, and I think I've settled on the, the red uh, mite wolf. You can definitely imagine this animal with the, the scary colors and nasty claws being demonized in some cultures as like this horrible beast that will come for you and your children, when in fact it's just an animal minding its own business, eating bugs. Kind of reminds me of how in some time periods uh, people would, I think still do in some cases in some cities, or not cities I guess, uh, put a bounty out on animals' pelts because, pe you know, wolves are attacking people's sheep or what have you. I don't know, I can imagine that happening with these guys because they're scary, even though they don't eat sheep or people. I do imagine they tear up people's property pretty good. That's one thing about uh, wild hogs in America. Those things will like destroy your property and tear it up real good. You can see that happening with these guys. It's definitely not worthy of, you know, killing them. That's my point. They're misunderstood beasties. Definitely cannot be domesticated. Imagine them being pretty big too, at least the size of a giant anteater. At least. Kind of like three feet at the shoulder. I haven't done creature design in forever. I should do more creature design. I, ever since I got my iPad, I haven't been doing hardly any traditional art. It's all been about the digital art, but it's because I have the freedom to literally sit on my sofa watching TV with my husband, and I can still produce stuff for art, and it's recorded for YouTube, and all of that, whereas sitting at the desk takes, you know, time. I've got to focus and do all of that. There are loud seagulls outside. I really enjoy putting comic markers back on top of watercolors. Oh my god, bird. I really enjoy putting comic markers on top of watercolors. There's just a way to push the colors a little bit more and push some tones and shadows and... It just adds a lot more depth than I was able to, you know, push the colors a little more saturated. I could have done it with watercolor, but it's... nice. Such loud birds. In the end, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the Red Mite Wolf. I hope you like it. I hope to do another soon, or at least another dinosaur or something. Going back to the classics. I feel like I've been trying to do too many crazy things lately. 
and it was just nice to do something I enjoyed. And I think maybe you guys would enjoy it too. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are interested in seeing more of this because I would like to do some more creature design. Thank you for coming today. Uh, let me know in the description if you liked this or didn't like this or what kind of videos of mine you actually like watching because I want to produce more um, but I want to get some more engagement from you guys. I also want to stop and thank my patrons Jamie, Mom, Dad, Hans, and Kaze. Thank you so much for supporting me, it means a lot, and I'll see you guys sometime next week. Bye!